but off we go. The recording is now in progress. We've just had a word of prayer, and now we are off and running on lesson number five, our final lesson, as I was mentioning early in the pre-get-together. Uh, Can't hardly believe that it is already finished, but here we are, lesson number five, chapter number four of Philippians. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to be honest. I have really just loved having this opportunity of going through Philippians. It's been um, it's been in a word epic. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully it's felt like that to you. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and, uh, gotten half as much as I have. I've just felt like I've maybe fallen in love with the book all over again. And it's been a real blessing. Let's go through our review very quickly, uh, lessons one through four, and then we're going to cover our themes uh, this evening and go through things. In Acts chapter 16, we know that Paul has a vision of a man from Macedonia standing and begging him, come over and help us. And that's exactly what he does. In the process of that, this is on his second missionary journey. He goes across uh, from Asia in this area over into the continent of Europe. And so God has prevented him from going here into this state of Bithynia, kind of this territory and state. And instead he travels this short uh, jaunt across the water and lands here in Neapolis and heads to Philippi, one of the leading cities. And of course we know this is where he establishes a church, faces some persecution uh, and, and uh, later writes a letter, a prison epistle, uh, to uh, the, the Philippian believers. Philippians has a theme, and it is A, B, C, or D, the return of Christ, the church universal, spiritual gifts, and how to use them, or joy. Do you guys know what that is? Happy joy. It is joy. That's right. That's right. That's the whole theme behind the whole epic joy thing. I'm not trying to be uh, funny or anything of that nature, just to uh, definitely is of the theme of the book. And so as we continue, we see that joy is the theme. It is a prison epistle. We've been talking a little bit about this. Do you guys know what the different prison epistles are? Anybody? There's four of them. We know that Philippians is one of those. Uh, and what are the other three? One written to an individual and then the other two that were written to a church. Anyone? You guys remember? Colossians. Colossians is in there. Thank you, Ms. Donna. What else? So we got Philippians, Colossians. Philemon. Uh, Philemon is the one that's written to the individual, not to the church. And we're missing one other. Very similar to Colossians, actually. Anyone? Ephesians. 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 You nailed it. That's very good. So it's Ephesians, Col Philippians, Colossians, and then Philemon. And uh, all of these are written while uh, Paul is in prison, um, but written to the different churches as well as to the individuals. So Paul told the Philippians that they would know, uh, that they should know that his Jewish resume was a great one, but he now considered it all rubbish or trash. Uh, rubbish if you're from England, uh, trash uh, or uh, whatever, uh, if you're from the United States uh, and elsewhere. Is this true or is this false? Remember? True. 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 That is right. It is true. Chapter 3, verse 8 that we study, he says, What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, my Je uh, Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things, and I consider them garbage, rubbish, trash, that I may gain Christ. All right. And at least once in every chapter, there is a verse that stands out as worthy of memorization or memorialization. In other words, epic verses live here. And I got to tell you, last week, Philippians chapter three, I came away just thinking there's just like no way to top this chapter for epic verses. I mean, there were at least four different ones that easily could have been epic verses. And the only way that it could get topped is to go on read uh, on reading in Philippians and find Philippians chapter four. I mean, did you guys notice how many epic verses there were in this passage that we're reading tonight? Um, so it's great. I'm excited. I'm, uh, and I will just say, if we've been talking about this, we've been sharing this graphic Philippians 413, a picture of Frank Smith's chest right there. Uh, like that's a thing. Uh, it's been, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just try to see if you guys are awake and paying attention and yes, you are. That's good. 
these are reminders. Philippians 4.13, this is the week that we talk about it. And so we're going to review the epic verses. In my humble opinion, that's the I-M-H-O. Um, this is not right or wrong. It's just my humble opinion. But Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Definitely epic. That's the one that I picked out from Philippians chapter 1 personally. Philippians chapter 2, I chose chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's the epic verse that I chose. You guys may, and I believe did, choose some different ones. Last week, I could not even bring myself to not do it. I, I had an honorable mention. I had a bronze medal, I had a silver medal, and then I had a gold medal because there was just so much in there. Um, I know that there was a small marital spat between the Smiths uh, because, because one said my epic verse is Philippians 3.13, and the other said, well, mine is 3.13 and 14, and she said, you can't do that. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> this was on their anniversary. I, I almost undid 31 years of marriage. I should have laid out the parameters a little more clearly, but um, no, I'm kidding. Of course, I'm exaggerating and trying to be funny, but yes, this is the thing that I thought in Philippians 3 was so powerful. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And I, this was one of these that I personally thought taught us something because in there you will see that doing those things from different translations, sometimes it can be even a little bit more epic. Uh, the one that I memorized when I was younger was uh, I press on towards the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And so that to me is maybe a touch more epic but uh, definitely some epic verses. So today is the day and now is the time. Let's turn in our homework. What jumped out to you in your own readings of Philippians chapter four? Uh, or what is your, in your own humble opinion, what is the epic verse or verses from Philippians chapter four? And uh, I will open the floor to you guys. Y'all jump in there and tell me, do you guys have an epic verse or is that the tattoo that you have Philippians chapter 4 13 is already your tattoo anyone see I have that around my neck they oh like. nice so so can you show that again it's a 25 supposed to be 25 pound um weight oh nice so, yeah it's made from a this Christian company called wings of strength nice yeah. And it and it has the Philippians four thirteen. Every 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 one of these that he made, regardless if it's a a, a barbell or a dumbbell, yeah, or a kettlebell, it has a a verse on it. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's yeah. cool, and I like that. That's that's good. So, uh, is that your way of saying that Philippians four thirteen is your epic verse? That and eight and nine. <laughs> That eight and nine. Okay. All right. Interesting. And what is, what is eight and nine? And by the way, I, I fully endorse uh, not being able to choose because as you, as you know, I have an honorable mention bronze, silver. I mean, I can't choose either. So do you, uh, do you guys, we all remember what Philippians 413 is the old King James version. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And uh, then you had four, eight, and nine as well? No, eight and nine. Yes. Okay. Chapter four, verses eight and nine. Yeah. Do you have, do you have those with you, Miss Donna? Uh, finally, brother, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think of these things those things which ye have bought which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me 
do and the, and the God of peace shall be with you. Awesome. Awesome. That is great. Um, Philippians chapter four, verse eight, nine. And I think you read 10 as well in there, but that's great. Fantastic. So that's, uh, that's somebody who can't make up their mind besides for me on this call. I'm here for that. Uh, I appreciate that. Anybody else want to jump in or Miss Donna, if you want to just kind of share a little bit, feel free. If not, um, somebody else can jump in. Yeah, I have um, 7, 13, and 19. Okay. Do you, do so, you mind reading those for us? Yes. Um, 13 is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And um, sorry, let me put it. 19 is, um, I use the message version, and it says, you can be sure that God will take care of everything you need. His generosity exceeding even yours in the glory that pours out from Jesus. Our God and our Father abounds in glory that just pours out into eternity. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So good. I will give you a little hint. So far, you guys are lining up with things that I've chosen as well. So yeah, I can't and, help but um, say seven, seven says, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. Yes. So good. So good. Awesome, ladies. Thank you. Anyone else want to jump in there and share yours? Anyone? Um, I'll say that all those that have been said, or I like those two, but also I like uh, four. Always be joyful in the Lord. I say again, be joyful. Oh, nice. See, uh, I know that one um, in the NIV, in the King James Version. That's rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say it, rejoice. But I like the way that that translation, what translation did you just read that out of? Um, it's the, um, God's word, the word. Okay. It, it, and, and it says, be joyful in the Lord. Is that what it says? It says, always be joyful in the Lord. I say again, be joyful. I like that. That that's different than I've heard it. And I really like that. That's very nice. Good stuff. Anyone else, uh, want to jump in, turn in your homework? The rest of you are um, getting zeros, by the way, if you know. Well. <laughs> I have all of the ones that have been said, but I had six and seven together and then seven alone. <laughs> so I also like six, but I, it goes with seven kind of. Okay. But so, I like seven by itself also. So give us, give us six and seven and then give us seven by itself and tell us why they go together and then why they don't. <laughs> okay. So six is be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Awesome. Um, I, I mean, it kind of goes together because I think it's a full sentence, but I also think the second half, chapter seven, is just so comforting all by itself. Um it's not about asking God for anything, but, you know, things happen and sometimes they just don't make any sense. And I just think about that scripture and sometimes when it doesn't make sense to have peace and you just do and you know it just it has to come from God and it it's beyond your understanding, but um, but it but it's it's a comfort that you feel, especially um, when you go through something really tragic and just kind of like doesn't make any sense, but somehow God gets you through it and you just, all you can say is this is the peace of God that doesn't pass all the understanding. It's just beyond our understanding. Yes. Yeah, uh, that is fantastic, Teresa. I appreciate you sharing that so much. And, and I love that verse uh, and that, that part is so powerful. I can't explain it. I just know that it is. I know that God's got this. I know that God's bringing me through. I know that he's up to something, even though I can't figure it out. And, yeah. and it, it, it doesn't even have to be explained. It might not even be able to be fully understood. It can only be maybe experienced by God's people, but in the process of it, it is powerful and it is life sustaining. And um, I have often tried to communicate it. I don't know if it comes across, but I have often tried to communicate it and just say, I can't even put it into words. I just know that you have to experience it. But if you experience it, God speaks to you on a level in your soul that you can't explain 
but it's like your creator called your name and like it's just it's it's incredible and uh it's beyond understanding and it gives you a sense of peace no matter what you face and even if it's tragic as you said so yeah great stuff great stuff very good um sorry didn't mean to start preaching um someone else do you guys have one other verse or echo the same verse or whatever anyone well mine were all covered i had six and seven 13 and 19 <laughs> I, I told you i couldn't, I couldn't matches, decide <laughs> yeah the only thing that matches philippians 13 uh, or three is philippians four it's just incredible you know so good stuff very good chapter okay. four is loaded yeah chapter four is loaded and really and, and and this is when i was reading the book of philippians to kind of prepare and say this is going to be the theme and all that stuff as i kept reading it and kept reading it and kept reading it this is what was jumping out to me it's like man these verses these verses i mean they mm -hmm. they're life-changing verses if you allow them to be and not just worthy of memorization but memorialization and and live you know their life worthy verses it's just amazing so anyway well um i tell you what let's keep moving here here's the honorable mention for me and my God will meet all of your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Monica, that's the same verse that you quoted from a different, uh, different version. Yeah. Uh, you guys ready for the controversy to begin? <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. The bronze medal. This is me. And I will say I started preparing this not Monday, but the week, a week ago Monday. And as I was preparing it, this is where I was standing. I will say this has changed a little bit, but here's what bugged me at the initial that, that the King James version is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And it's a little different in the context. And we're going to read the context tonight. And so that's always kind of been a little bit of a, a little bit of a struggle for me, but I do think my mind has changed and I would probably rank this higher. Uh, I'll just say this. Um, and I can say before you burn me at the stake, remember my thesis in this lesson is that I'm talking about the epic verses show us how to find joy. Um, and this is one of those translations that it just stands out. And there are, there is somebody on this call who disagrees with me. Um, a guest speaker that I have asked to come in and uh, maybe mention a few things and I will just and then have that person present the other side and the emphasis here is a guest speaker Teresa and I were driving somewhere together and as we were driving together we started talking about what was going to be our epic verse and I said well I don't know about Philippians 4:13." And she said a few words, and I'm just going to tell you straight out what she told me changed my mind and changed my heart on this. Teresa, guest mm -hmm. speaker, <laughs> <laughs> please tell me or tell the class what you told me as we were traveling together um, about Philippians 4.13 and its place in your life. Okay, well, I basically said that I don't think I would be here without this verse. Um, one of the reasons is my mom told this to me all the time um, to get me through a lot of hard times. And <laughs> one example that she likes to tell is um, when I was in college, I was, I was taking an exam and the exam was a full day. It was like an eight hour exam, but you get, a, you get to go home for lunch for about an hour. And uh, I, I went home at lunch, I put my pajamas on, I got into bed and I said, I'm not going back. <laughs> and uh, it's just too hard and I'm not gonna do it. And, but I called my mom always and she said, you know, she always told me this, this scripture. She always told me, I, you know, I can do all things through Christ. And it was just like, she just never stopped saying it. She said it all the time. So I did eventually go back and uh, I did pass the exam um, by the grace of God, 
<laughs> and now I'm here, but it, it's got me through a lot of things, but that, that's the, that was the one that's kind of funny. <laughs> no, that's, that's awesome. And one of the things that you also mentioned was you, you faced down a fear of kind of heights and various things like that, that had to do with your job. They put you out on an oil platform and uh, we're showing you around and you were, you know, five stories up in the air and, you know, on the ground out yeah. there and scared to death. And you were like, I don't know if I can go do this. And you thought I, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yeah. And, yeah. I've been in high places, but, um, they put you in a, they basically, basically put you on a, they call it a basket, but there are no sides to the basket. It's just a thing. <laughs> it's just a flat piece of circle with that's hung on by ropes and they pick you up with a crane they pick the ropes up with a crane and hover you over the like I don't 20 foot waves or whatever out in out in the Gulf of Mexico um it's kind of terrifying and you have to jump off because you have to jump when the boat meets you know when the boat comes up is when you have to jump because that's when it's closer to your feet as soon as the waves go down the boat goes back down so you have to like time time it when you jump off of this thing it doesn't set you off it doesn't set you down just have to yeah yeah that's that's one of those 413 moments man for sure that's awesome well and I got to tell you Teresa seriously you changed my mind a little bit because and I'm gonna just say the whole point of epic verses is not to underline them or highlight them in your Bible. They're to hide it in your heart and let it change your life. Right. And so Mm -hmm. when, when you told me, you're like, I, I, I know there are other epic verses, but I got to tell you for me personally, I probably wouldn't be in the position I'm in and wouldn't have the things that I have and the blessings that are in my life have come about because I stayed with it not because I felt like I was up to the task, but because I could do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I was like, all right, that's fair enough. <laughs> you know, that's fair enough. I will, I will change my mind. I didn't change the PowerPoint, but I, I just loved it. It was phenomenal and uh, such an encouragement. So thank you for sharing that. And, and as I was driving with you, I said, you're going to have to share that. You know, that, you know, and she's like, okay, I can do it. But wasn't that awesome? You guys, I mean, what a blessing and what a testimony. That's what it is truly all about. So thank you, Teresa. I appreciate it. Um, all right. Any thoughts or comments or questions or anything before we kind of keep moving here? Anyone? You guys, you guys like my little pun, the whole guest speak. All right. Never mind. Okay. Here we go. Um, <laughs> the silver medal. I've never before. heard that before. I'm sure you've <laughs> never, never heard before. anything like that before. Philippians chapter four, verse six through seven, be anxious about nothing, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and minds in Christ Jesus. Another one for that. I had that one down as my silver and my epic verse personally was Philippians four, eight, finally, brothers and sisters, Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And we're going to talk more about these things in the lesson. Good stuff. Thank you, guys. I hope this has been enjoyable. I've loved hearing from y'all. And it's been really enjoyable to, to hear what the Lord is speaking to you. So let's keep moving here. And we're going to finish up uh, tonight in Philippians chapter 4. And we're going to kind of recap, you know, a little bit of the book as well. Let's begin with an appeal for steadfastness and unity, verses one through nine. And let's begin by kind of looking back where we've been. I think maybe one of the undercurrents, um, of course, the biggest theme is definitely joy. But I think there's an undercurrent or maybe even the um, catalyst for the book being written seems to be that there was not just trouble that the Philippian church was facing, but also kind of trouble outside from, you know, the people that were persecuting them, but also trouble from the inside where it seemed like in the persecution, people were cracking under the pressure instead of bonding together. And so as we read 
Philippians, you can see it crop up in small ways. And if you're paying special attention and you're watching, you can see it and you see, well, why is Paul mentioning this? It happens in chapter two, verse two it says, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one of mind. Why is he saying these things? Well, probably pretty clear that there's a little bit of a, of a going in two different directions. You know, the the pressure's coming down, and when it's hitting you guys, some are going this way and some are going that way, and there's a, a rift in the unity. In chapter 1, verse 27, part B, and kind of condensed down, it says, whatever happens, conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel, and I will know that you will stand firm in one spirit, striving together as one for the faith of the gospel. In other words, you guys be together and strive for this thing together. Don't let it push you apart. And we see that again here in Philippians chapter four, verses one through nine. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you whom I love and long for, my joy, my crown, stand firm in the Lord. And in this way, dear friends, and I plead with Euodia and I plead with Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. And yes, and I ask you, my true companion, help these women since they have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say it, rejoice. Now, I'm going to hit pause real quick and just kind of throw in a little bit of running commentary. Verse 3 is very interesting to me, and I'll tell you. He says, I'm asking you, help these women to be of one heart and mind. I think what's going on here, I don't have any basis or any biblical, you know, uh, evidence per se. It's clear that they were quarreling and fighting and that they were not unified. That's what we do know. Anything else is speculation. But my speculation is, is that it's possible that these women were kind of polarizing figures and leaders in the church and people were going to this side and then some were going to this side. And in the middle, people might not have had a whole lot of an opinion, but they were not trying to bring the reconciliation. They were just letting it be and saying, well, that's not really my business. But Paul tells us, no, it is your business. Help these women to get back together and be unified. Don't add fuel to the fire of their argument and find a way to be a person who's not running and backbiting over here and backbiting over here and gossiping here and gossiping back over here, but be friends with both of them and be the part of the building the bridge where you go to one and say, hey, don't forget, she loves you. I know y'all are on the outs right now and having a hard time, but she's a good woman. Hey, don't forget, you guys were of one mind for a long time. I know you're upset with her, but don't forget, she's your brother or she's your sister in Christ. Eventually, we want you guys to be back together. And I would just say that sometimes we as Christians add fuel to the fire in the wrong way. And then if we're not adding fuel to the fire in the wrong way, sometimes we just wash our hands of it and say, none of my business. I ain't getting involved. But it seems like Paul is saying, go in there and not be trying to figure it all out, but just go in there and do everything that you can to connect with these people and bring them back together once again. Does that make sense? And, and I think that that's a, a powerful thing to say. Um, questions, thoughts, or comments? Anyone? Uh, when we see the fourth verse, uh, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Yes. Uh, he, here, uh, I I want to relate to few other verses uh, from above. He says in the previous chapter that but our citizenship is in heaven. Yes. Where he confirms that and he gives the assurance that we do not belong to this world. Our citizenship is in heaven. Mm -hmm. So rejoice that you do not belong here and you are of Christ. Yeah. Then uh, again, he says in uh, verse three, he says, whose names are in the book of life, yeah. the fellow workers, your names are written in the book of life. Yeah. So rejoice in the Lord always. That is, uh, that is uh, made confirmation. Yeah. Then he says, let your gentleness be evident to all. Here comes the part 
and participation how can one show their evidence of uh, being gentle towards others here what uh, i made a study personal study of this particular thing is when you belong to christ you become the branch with him where he is the vine yes from john 15 mm-hmm. he says it right i am the vine you are the branches if a man remains in me and i in him he will bear much fruit yes and uh, apart from me you do not do nothing yes and uh, in uh, to this i want to add again to psalms 1 where yes. he says but his delight is in the law of god and on his law he meditates day and night the one the branch which is attached to the vine he will delight in the law of god and uh, he meditates on it day and night he is like a tree planted by the streams of the water mm-hmm. which yields its fruit in a season and whose leaf does not wither whatever he does prospers from there comes the fruit of gentleness from there comes the fruit of peace from there comes the from the fruit of joy yes and uh, when we keep going down he says right finally brothers whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is right whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy think about such things means meditate on the law of the lord mm-hmm. put it into practice then you can yield the fruit of gentleness and peace and you will not worry about anything because you plant a uh, uh, planted the tree planted beside the streams of the water and yeah. you will not wither do not be anxious about anything that's awesome so that is how i have linked up all this no that's together. great it, it's 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 a flow of god's word how one principle in this place connects here connects here and then you see the outflow of it that's that's awesome that's really uh really great and and I love the the insight there and I I think you're dead on and I also think you're going for my job which you know scares me a little bit I ain't gonna lie <laughs> love it you're thinking yeah yeah if you guys if you guys show up on this zoom later and Kirthy is holding a pulpit in front of her before we get together y'all know that I'm not just paranoid that's all I'm saying <laughs> That's the second person that want your job, Pastor. Watch out. <laughs> God bless you, Kirthi. It is awesome and thank you. And yes, it's funny, but my pleasure, is, Pastor, and it is all you you're doing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. This is your homework, thing. the uh, the one you sign to us, we have to do the homework, right? <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. And and I will just say also, it's always so much better whenever you are learning it for yourself finding it for yourself and making these connections for yourself it's good to be spoon fed but when you get in there and you dig in and you get the word for yourself it it roots in a different way and uh, and I'm I'm excited to see that happening for you so good all right let's keep moving here in philippians 4 i went off on a tangent there and uh and so let's pick back up I plead with you to uh, Yodia and Sintiki to be of one heart and one mind and you guys help them. We're all names written in the book of life. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. In every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Finally brothers, whatever these things are, whatever you've learned or received in me in verse 9 put it into practice then the god of peace will be with you and i notice this if you do these things and do these things the god of peace will be with you that's important there are many times i talk with christians and i see that there is a it's a disconnect between what is true and biblical because i've heard people say Well I just I I I'm I've been praying that this would happen. I'm praying that this would happen. I'm praying that this would happen. And I understand prayer is an important important and the critical key. But it is not the only step in truly becoming a person who follows the Lord. 
if the only thing that you ever choose to do is say the prayer and say, Lord, just take these things from me, then you might be holding those things for the rest of your life. But the truth is, is that sometimes God calls us not just to pray about, but to take steps towards the things that he has called for us to do. I've got victory in my life over some things in my life that I had to do some steps to take over. That prayer didn't take it away. I had to say, okay, the Lord is helping me and he's changing my want to. The Lord is the one who wills, who, who works within us to will and to act according to his good pleasure. But notice he's willing to, or he's take, changing our will, but he's also pushing us towards action that we take. We partner with the Lord and it's not our power, but his. But sometimes he leaves things on our shoulders until we take the action for the good. You guys understand what I'm saying? I, I, I'm not preaching a, a works-based gospel here, but there are things in your life that you will never get rid of until you decide and determine that you will take steps towards getting rid of them. I'm going to say something. There are things in some people's lives that God has taken away immediately. Like there's a temptation to do evil in this way and they give it to the Lord and God just takes it away immediately. That happens but that's the rare occasion. Most of the time, sanctification and moving towards God's will for your life means you continue to pray about it and you continue to take the right path, putting all of these things, whatever is noble, what is right, what is lovely, what is admirable, doing these things that are excellent and praiseworthy, thinking on those things, watching others who have walked the path before you, you've heard or learned or received from me, and put those things into practice, and then the peace of God will be with you. That's important, because we can't just simply wish. That's not a strategy for spiritual growth. All right, so I just flat out preached there for a moment. What do you guys have to say about that? Anyone? I say that word do, D-O, should be capitalized. Right. Is that that? That's the key thing. Do it. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. I appreciate that. I'll take that as an amen. Frank, I appreciate you, brother. Good stuff. What else? Anyone else? Yeah. Um, it reminds me of um, Deuteronomy 28, where it says that um, if you obey God and um, follow all his commandments, then these blessings will come upon you. Mm. Yes. And if you don't, then this other one will come upon you. Yes, that's right. There are often times where God says, if you choose to do this, then you have blessings. And if you choose to not do these things, then you will deal with the consequences. And I think that that sometimes can get lost in our conversations, but it is there. Good stuff, Monica. Good, good observation. Good stuff. Anyone else? Someone else. Okay, so you already know. I think this is the epic passage in chapter four, verse eight. Um, I had this one down and here's what I said. How does this show us and point us toward epic joy? Joy is found in focusing on the good that God has given in our lives. Whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is, you know, True, whatever is right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy. Think about these things. Now, let me ask you guys a question. We all do this naturally, right? <laughs> Think about this. I mean, I don't know about you, but I could have somebody have a list of 20 things they love about me. And one thing that's the tiniest little bit negative. And guess what I'm going to think about? I'm going to think about, no, not the 19 great things, but the one thing that's even lukewarm, right? I mean, we can be so petty and so childish and so silly. And I'm, I'm, I'm the king of this, right? And so I don't know. I'm sure I'm just the only one. But this is a recipe for your joy to be sapped. Am I right? I mean, think about this for a second. And I'm, 
I'm not going to rant and rave on social media or anything like that, but talk about a place where you can get into a, into a, a rabbit hole that takes you down a, a, a wormhole of negativity for a day or two or an hour or two super easily. Like it can be a dangerous place out there online. Right. I mean, that's true. And uh, so we've got to be very careful that we guard our hearts and minds not just the things that we feel, but also the things that we, you know, consistently uh, think about. Um, joy is found in focusing on the good that God has given in our lives. And I wrote this down, that even difficult lives have some blessings that we choose to stop focusing on when our joy is wrong. And I, I've used this illustration. This is not original with me, but it is profound. I think most of our lives are like railroad tracks that you have two sides of your life, one usually going very well and one usually that is somewhat struggling. In other words, I've said it this way often, whenever you have time on your hands, you probably don't have money in your hands. <laughs> and whenever you have money in your hands, you don't have any time on your hands at all, right? How many of you guys have ever experienced the same thing? It's hard to find them both at the same time, isn't it, right? Or what about this? What about when you are having great success in your professional life, but things are in your personal life are in absolute chaos? Have you all ever had that experience? Or what about when your personal life is going gangbusters, but you're not even sure if you're going to have a job when you show up tomorrow? Right? So, so hit pause. And this is where the rubber meets the road to say it in the old terminology. What do we focus on when we're in the midst of those things most of the time? You don't sit there and go, man, I, I, got, I got so much great going on in my personal life. By the way, the job's rough, but I just got so much. What do we do? We're like, oh, I don't know if I got a job. I'm scared to death. And we go on and on. And 90% of our life is focused on that professional situation, not on the personal one. Um, I'm, I'm at my parents' house, and they have 63 grandfather clocks in this house. So if y'all are hearing that, I just want y'all to know. It's a round number, um, a guesstimate. Um, but yes, so this is another thing. What about, have you ever had a physical life that is struggling, but emotionally you're doing great, or vice versa? The difficulty for us is to whatever is pure, whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is positive in our life, anything that's excellent or praiseworthy, think on these things. And when you do, the God of peace will be with you, right? Um, this is the road to joy for sure. And it's also the road to not experiencing joy. Um, I'll go you one other. And then I'm going to give at least one of you a chance to kind of comment. Our lack of joy is often comparison based. In other words, I'm perfectly happy making a hundred dollars an hour. I think I've got the best job in the whole wide world making a hundred dollars an hour until I find out the guy from across the hall who's less experienced and nobody likes and doesn't ever do his work and never gets in earlier than me or stays later than me is making $120 an hour. Now I'm just ticked off. So the blessing became a curse, not because of what I have, but because of what it is in comparison to someone else. Do you guys see what I'm saying? And so, by the way, I don't have a guy across the hall and I'm not making hundred dollars an hour, but you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm like, this is what I'm saying. If we can get past the comparisons and just focus on the positives instead of dwelling on the negatives, even sometimes that come in positives that are in our life, that's a path to joy. That's a path to epic joy that it doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter what I'm dealing with. There are things in my life today, here, in this moment, that are praiseworthy. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just tell you, Shelly did this for me yesterday. I, have you all ever had one of those days that just feels like nothing goes right and everything takes three times longer than it should? Have you all ever had that experience? Have you ever looked back at the end of the day and gone, 
Now, what did I accomplish? I mean, I worked my tail off and I literally don't have a single thing to, you know, show for it or account for it. And, and that happened to me yesterday. And I, I was just going along and it, I was trying to be upbeat and positive, but, but Shelly was talking to me on the telephone and she goes, you know, we've got so much to be grateful for. And it just, it, it was awesome. You know, she just lifted my spirits and pointed my face back towards everything that's excellent and praiseworthy and, and whatever's good and noble and right in my life instead of just the frustration of a day and um, just powerful uh, when you can personify or even help someone else kind of personalize this thought. So I said a ton. Um, do you guys have any other uh, thoughts or any other questions, uh, any comments that you have? Please at least one person sound off and then we'll, we'll bring this quickly to a close. Anyone? I'm gonna grab something to drink here so y'all speak right up. Are y'all all talked out all of a sudden? Are y'all looking at the clock going, Pastor Randy, we've not even covered most of these verses. We're gonna get them. We're gonna get them done. Here we go. Thanks for the gifts. Paul no, writes. Ouch, because you're stepping on toes. Was, oh, <laughs> <laughs> is that what's going on? I'm stepping on toes. <laughs> well, I threw myself under the bus too, because I promise this is this is not uh, something that uh, it's all right in the pulpit, and that's why I'm preaching about it. I was I was struggling with this yesterday. Just yesterday, I was struggling. So uh, we're all there, um, but it is the path to joy. Thank you. Um, so thanks for the gifts. Paul speaks about very quickly here some things in chapters chapter four, verse 10 through 20. He says, I greatly rejoice in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you just had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need for I've learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether hungry or well-fed, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all this through him who gives me strength, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Yet it is good for you to share my troubles. Moreover, as you know, Philippians, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I was set out for Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts, but what I desire is more to be credited to your account. I have received full payment and I have more than enough. I'm amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts that you sent. They are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Is there anything that jumps out to you in this passage of scripture? Anyone? Just got a couple more verses to go, but have just a moment for you. Anyone? Phrase of being content in whatever. Yeah. Yeah, just, and, just and, being thankful. Yes. You know, within any situation. And I, I know that sometimes I tend to forget, you know, in certain situations that I might be in, even with sometimes if the kids are sick and in the hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, with all the pressure that is coming down on me, I just, yeah, I just have to find that moment where I can be still, you know, give thanks because otherwise it feel like the world is like caving in. Yeah. And, 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 and if I may, Ms. Donna, thank you for, for that personal testimony and, and that revelation. I think, I think what Ms. Donna said just jumped to me that, we don't, we don't need to go around and be like the, the person who doesn't pay attention to the house burning around them. You know, like if there's stuff going on in your life, you don't need to be like, I'm so happy. This is the best, you know, like you don't need to be that. That's not what Paul is saying here. Let's remember that Paul is writing from prison and he doesn't know if he's going to make it or not. He doesn't know if he's going to live or die. 
but he's telling him, rejoice in the Lord, be glad in the Lord. How can you do that? I think what Donna said a minute ago reaches there. And it just kind of, it's like just taking a minute in the day and going, I'm surrounded by this craziness, but God is good. Like in this moment, I reaffirm that God is good. And when you do that, they're just, it invites peace. It expels frustration and and anger. It invites joy. It invites God to be with you in the midst of what you're dealing with. And when you do that, it doesn't even have to be like you walk around with this starry eyed look on your face all day long. You know, that's what a good little Christian would do and say. Instead, it's just this assurance that, hey, God is at work. And, and I may be down, but in the midst of being down, I want to, I want to hit pause and I want to let God into this situation. I want to focus on the good. I want to focus on the Lord and I want him to speak and remind me that he's with me in this thing. And I think everything changes there. And I, I would just encourage you. And, and I, I think that's exactly kind of what I alluded to about Shelly, um, you know, just kind of speaking into my life and being you know what, but God is good. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I can't even act like he's not even on a bad day, you know, even on a bad day, God is good. And so just that moment of somebody reminding you, and sometimes you being the one to remind yourself, um, that's good, Donna. I, it, it spoke to me and I, it spoke to me. Thank you for sharing that. And, and that's good. That's very, very good. Um, anyone else, any, anything else? Um, yes. Um, shortly before COVID, there was a message we preached at church um, about, um, it says, weep with those who weep and um, rejoice with those who rejoice. Yes. And I asked the question, and I didn't come to church that day, but I watched it on TV, and he answered the question. So I asked that, what if um, something good happens to me and the person beside me is in tears? What do I do? So he said, first, we should sympathize with that person. And use our own good, um, the, the good events that happen to us to uplift that person. Mm. So I can kind of relate it to what Ms. Donna just said now. Mm. Thank you. I appreciate that, Monica. I remember you asking that question. Um, and uh, I appreciate you remembering and bringing that up. But that is, that is good. Um, thank you. Good stuff. Very good stuff. All right. Um, let me see here. Very quickly, um, the final greetings. I, I, I want one, one other thing that jumped out to me. The thanks for their gifts. It's clear that Paul recognizes that that is a gift from God and that that is a gift to God. But it is also clear that people are partnering with those things. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? God's people being moved by God's spirit to support and do the things that should be done for God's kingdom work. It's not new, but sometimes we forget that it takes all of us being submissive to God's spirit. You know, I, do I want the church in, uh, in, in Texas to continue to expand? Yes. So what do I do? I need to support Jim Kilgore who's going places that I can't go. I need to be supporting you know, Kyle Howell, who's building a brand new church building. Like that's my responsibility as a, as a believer, not as a pastor, but as a believer to say, I'm giving that gift, not to those men that because they're perfect, but I'm giving that to God and his cause. But it takes me reaching in my back pocket and taking out my wallet and saying, I'll give. And, and I think Paul is saying, I had needs and you guys were faithful to do that. And God is going to reward you for what you gave to me because you were giving it to him, if that makes sense. And, and I just think that it's important to be reminded that ultimately God's kingdom work could be done by God alone, but he has chosen to partner with human beings. I, I think it was a bad plan. I ain't gonna lie. Uh, because I think he's stronger and more capable and much more trustworthy than we are. But it also pulls us off the sidelines and puts us in the game. And so because of that, I know God knows what he's doing. That was a joke. Um, so we got to participate. And I think, you know, that's important. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, that's all I wanted to say. And 
I'm going to keep moving here. We're going to move to this final greeting. And it's literally just this one slide. Greet all God's people in Christ Jesus. The brothers and sisters who are with me send greetings to you, basically. And all God's people here send you greetings, especially those who belong to whose household? Caesar's household. So this is the way that we know that Paul is in that Roman imprisonment. And then that he's not just in the Roman imprisonment, but that he is literally having effect for the cause of Christ in a pagan society's seat of power. He is making a way for God's kingdom work to be spread even there. It's powerful. It's awesome. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ will be with your spirit. Amen. And he ends the letter. So very quickly, let's move to our homework for next week and going to do a big takeaway. And then hopefully one or two of you guys might just say a little bit about what this has kind of spoken to you or how this has been a blessing to you. So let's talk about it real quickly. Your homework for next week is deciding now that you'll be involved in the next Zoom Bible study. <laughs> hey, it's just better when you guys are all here. It's better when y'all are here. It's better when y'all are participating. Um, the, the energy is just a different thing. And let's be clear, man, I'd love to go this deep on this many verses and this many topics and take time to interact and stuff on a Sunday morning. We just cannot. But this format allows you to grow in a w different way. Sometimes, you know, um, Sunday mornings are more motivation and inspiration than, you know, the things that we're learning. But in this, it is much more just deeper on the learning and little on the motivation side. And so I just encourage you, if you're going to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, like 2 Peter 3.18 commands you, this is where you do it. So just decide that you're going to be involved in the next Zoom Bible study. Keep going and keep growing deeper. And uh, your participation encourages me. It develops you and uh, it pleases the Lord. So uh, be, be here and be a part of that. Yes, I did that. All right. As your pastor, I, I just pulled that out and hit you with it, but there it is. Very quickly, here's my big takeaway from lesson five. And then I just uh, do a big takeaway from the whole book. And then just a thought or two from you guys on Philippians. So Paul encouraged the Philippians to focus on what God had done for them, not on the negative and the worrying things that they could have been focusing on. But in the process, Paul encourages them to keep pressing towards the high calling that God has placed on their life. In other words, don't just simply look around and be grateful, but also keep moving on the things that God has called you to do in your life. And so there's something powerful about that. And that momentum will change your life and bring you, wait for it, one, two, three, epic joy. That's right. Exactly. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this very much. Here's my big takeaway from Philippians. Paul taught the Philippians to not lose focus. Their joy comes from God and not from their circumstances. Amen. They have a prize to look forward to. And they have a life that they live people. They live with people that believe. They have the power to live that life. And they have a purpose in their life to live victoriously here and now. And so you notice there's a prize. And there's people, and there's power, and there's purpose, and all this stuff Paul is giving them in Philippians. And uh, it all comes from the God who gives joy, not because of the circumstances, but because he is good, and he is God, and we are his. Amen. All right. Do you guys have thoughts or anything about the book of Philippians? Just time for one or two very quickly before we end. I do appreciate you guys being a part of this. Somebody jump in here, give us your assessment, your takeaway, something that you think about from this book. It's too short. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible study or God's word? I mean, are you are you telling God it's too short? I mean, what are we doing? No, here? no, I was just saying the book, it's, it's a, it's, the verses are awesome. I just say it's too short. Just a little bit more. <laughs> It is, it is powerful. It is a powerful, powerful book. It's a pow power packed book, four yeah. chapters. Packed into four chapters. Amazing though. Amazing. Thank you, Miss Donna. That's good. That's good stuff. Anyone else? I want to, I want to summarize with one verse. Yes. The whole book. 
whatever i have learned whatever i have received whatever i have heard from you i have to put it into practice amen, amen. that's right <laughs> that's good that's good very good thank you kirthi and i i agree with that and uh uh, we follow and stand on the shoulders and the footsteps of others that have gone before us. And we partner with the uh, people who are with us, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, side by side and moving towards that prize, living with purpose, living with God's power and uh, remembering there's a prize for us there. So that's good stuff. Great. All right. I tell you what, I think that's a good place to end. So God bless you guys. I know it went just maybe a couple or three minutes extra long tonight, but thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of it each week. It's been a blessing and I've enjoyed very much just going through these things with you guys. And uh, I hope it's been a, as big a blessing to y'all as it has been to me. All right, y'all have a great rest of the week. I hope I will see you on Sunday. Uh, we got uh, impact month starting this coming Sunday and we're looking forward to it. And uh, blood drive this coming Sunday as well. So appreciate y'all. Love you guys. Y'all have a great rest of the week and we'll see you soon. Okay. When's the next Bible Thank study? You. Uh, next Bible study. I've got to get with my friend, Frank, and uh, so he's <laughs> going to tell me what he thinks I should study. Next. <laughs> when I talk to him, I'll let you know, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> but soon, probably, probably the Wednesday after, uh, um, after Labor Day or maybe one uh, week before then. So probably within a month or so, maybe a little less. We'll be counting on it. That sounds great. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll have a great one. Take care. Good night. Good night. Good night. No, 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 no,